Hello, I'm Greg Radke of Radke Mods, and welcome to another on-location video where I am at a friend's house. Once again, I'm with Mike from Mike's Mac Shack slash uh, Mac Yak, Michael Stanhope. Say hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. <laughs> and uh, we are here because I am picking up some of my Macs and some of the stuff he's giving me. Uh, we are in his storage unit right now where um, he had to move everything after his uh, his lab shop after my shack got sold and demolished yeah which was sad i really liked that place so did i yeah I figure i've been there for 18 years yeah so but anyway guys we're going to quickly film picking up the stuff and then i don't know you want to go to your house and test some of it if you want to carry it upstairs <laughs> Do you I, want to carry a DMAC upstairs? I've done it before. Yeah, I think you're just going to want to take it home and leave it at that. <laughs> I kind of want to test my iMac, though. Well, that's easy to carry upstairs. That's got the handle. It's true. It's also in a box. Yeah, I just take it out of the box. <laughs> but anyway, guys, we're going to, uh, I'm going to film him grabbing everything. Does that sound cool? Hopefully I don't drop anything. I hope you don't. He'll grab everything and we'll load up the truck and uh, we may do a quick excursion update video for the heck of it uh, while we're here. Who knows? Let's get to it. All right, Mike, so what are you grabbing right now? A very old iMac. A very old iMac. Yeah, no, don't, don't break your fluorescent lights. I'm going to break your right. iMac and the light bulbs. <coughs> oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, one first-gen iMac tray load in uh, Blueberry. Yeah, the, the back story on this is I uh, saw it for sale on Facebook. And Mike went and picked it up for me. It was uh, the woman's um, deceased um, dad's iMac he had uh, used. It's it's like brand new. He took very good care of it. It's got basically every accessory. I did an unboxing video on this. Yes, he did. And I'll put a link right up here about that. Not that it was like a brand new unboxing, but... Yeah. You know. It's still a fun Everything's unboxing. in here, which surprised me. It's even so. got the nasty uh, mouse and keyboard on it. Yeah. 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 What else are we getting here? Well, you want both of these or just this one? I mean, I'll take both of them. I'll have a 700. Okay. <laughs> Fine with me. All right. Well, I'll help you grab those two. You don't worry about them. Right there, we have a 1.25 gigahertz um, eMac, which is the very last one you can modify to run 9.2.2 uh, with 100% uh, software um, You're not getting support. my airport card. I don't it's, like you that much. That's fine. I've got a stack of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then right next to it, we've got a uh, eMac 700. I don't have a 700, and I've kind of gotten the eMac bug, so I'll gladly take it. If I remember, I know this one here, this one has an 80 gig hard drive, mm -hmm. and I think a gig and a half of memory. Mm -hmm. This one I'm pretty sure has an 80 gig hard drive, but I don't remember what kind of memory it has. Mm -hmm. So, because this one here, I only booted up the first time, and I never booted it again, because I had no use for it. But this one here, I used to use all the time. Mm -hmm. I used to do data transfers, because this one's got USB 2. This right, one doesn't right, work. right. So. And uh, he is also giving me this blue and white right here, which I need parts from to rebuild my uh, early blue and white. Um, and you want to show people something interesting before we head out here? It's really interesting unless you want to count the tower of power there or the tower of lack of power. <laughs> There's a lot of power in that. And it takes a lot of power too. <laughs> one eight G five, one comma one. What about the two GS? You want to show that? Yeah. Well, I don't. I haven't done anything with it. 
I just picked, I picked this up from Steve Matarazzo. He bought this for me a while ago. You know, I've always wondered how you say his last name. And uh, it's just a, it's a bare bones 2GS. It's a, it's, cool it's got one meg of memory, which is actually not super bare bones. Yeah. But that's the only thing it has. It doesn't have anything else. Um, I haven't even turned it on since I've gotten it. I, uh, I want, eventually want to take this home and work on it, but I'm still working on my Apple II Plus at the moment. Gotcha. Which is still in pieces. That's why this is down here. Speaking of that, we were originally planning on having Steve from Mac 84 down here also, but he... Uh, his uh, dad had a birthday party today, so he couldn't make it. Steve's got my uh, Apple IIe, which uh, I, I'm looking forward to getting soon. Which I know works because we were playing with it. Really? Yeah. Good. Good. We were trying. We be, we were trying something. We were having a problem with something. We tried yours. Well, I haven't actually uh, used a IIe since like third grade. I, I don't even remember how to use one. Ten print. I, there, 20, go to 10, end. <laughs> well, that would work. All right, let's get this thing out of the way here. Uh -huh. This is probably the easiest ah, and or lightest thing. Yeah, don't, let's not dump the blue and white. <laughs> oh, well, I have more. <laughs> Holy dog here, Batman. I thought my house looked bad. All right, well guys, we're gonna load up the truck real quick and then we'll do a quick truck update and then uh, we'll meet you back over at Mike's place. So uh, we'll check you guys out in a second. Right, Mike, so we're now standing in front of my excursion right here. We're gonna do a quick excursion video update in the middle of this video for the heck of it because, well, why not? And I want your opinion on this truck. And Ford. it's a Ford. That, my that, opinion is very low. That, that's my opinion too, honestly. I drive GMs. I do too. Although at least you got a good engine. Yeah, that's the only reason why. Because it's not a Ford thing. engine. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, here's the excursion. I have the hood popped here. What do you think? That's an engine. Yes, that's an engine. You're, you're very good at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't smell diesel fuel. Yeah. So that's a start. Yeah. Nice turbo. Thank you. It's a Garrett 38R. I just upgraded it. Yeah, and I just put in this Ram Air, um, which makes the turbo scream. When I do the official update video, guys, you're going to love that. I have to ask, how long does it take for that thing to spool up? A second or two, I think. Oh, that. that's pretty good. Yeah. Usually anytime you get a turbo that big, it's very slow. It's well, it, it's always spooling. It's well, it's, yeah. It's I just mean, to really get going. The second you stump the thing to the floor, it starts spooling. How many miles are on this? 183. Pretty impressive. It's not really leaking oil. I mean, you got normal seepage on the valve covers. Oh, yeah. Nothing serious. All, all seven threes leave oil. Well, I know. That's why I'm surprised it's not worse. <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean. Exactly. You know. Oh, your piping's pretty nice. Yeah, and it's going to even have nicer piping soon because uh, I'm, I'm doing, I, I'm replacing all the piping, all the cooling. Yeah, it's pretty clean. I mean, usually, I mean, that usually one of the first things I notice when I get open a hood of one of these things, they usually reek of diesel fuel because... Yeah, because they're notorious for having little tiny leaks. Pop here. leaks and oh, yeah, especially around now. the injection pump. Yeah. They're, they're, and it's just the way they are. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't smell it. It, it. it looks pretty good considering, you know, it is a diesel. Sweet. So it doesn't really look like it's leaking too much. I mean, the truck's in pretty solid shape. I think you need more leaves. Yeah. Uh,. I'm actually leaving the front the way it is, possibly. Oh, yeah. It's sagging a little bit, but it's, uh... Airbags, dude. Airbags. Well, I'm actually replacing the rear ones. 
with uh, bigger springs. Well, I was saying those typically always break. Yeah, one of, this one's broken. Broken? Yeah. yeah. That's nothing. I've replaced so many of the rear springs, not not just on excursions, but on anything F2, anything Super Duty. Yeah. And this is basically a Super Duty truck. Literally, yeah. It just it's, doesn't I, have a bed. I'm putting 350 um, uh, B code springs on them. Yeah. Yeah, the rear springs on these things were always junk, they always break. Um, luckily, they're simple to replace, and they're really not that expensive. Yeah. I mean, if you buy, you can actually buy the stock springs from Ford just as cheap as you can buy aftermarket ones. Right. So, I mean, it's in good shape. I mean, I, I don't know what they do to the roads down there, but if this thing was from up here. It, it's from Ohio. It was, okay, well, Ohio is even worse than here. Yeah, but it was Typically, garage. it'd be rusted out here real bad. Yep. This would all be gone underneath here. Yep. Um, especially since this has the body cladding on it. Yep. They typically always rust out underneath the body cladding. Actually, bad. I think uh, it might be going a little bit under the, yeah, the rear ones. That's minor. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm talking like there's usually holes here, and like the only thing that's holding this on is a piece of bubble gum. It, it basically. And people think it passes inspection like that. Uh, it wouldn't West Virginia. It wouldn't here either. Well, it would. Oh, it would. It oh, would. yeah, it won't here. I mean, as long as it's covered, you can't actually see the outside rust. Oh, true. Yeah, it's true. If we can't see it, we can't fail it. And if we look in here, we've updated the uh, steering wheel's uh, airbag, put in um, a touch Pioneer unit with uh, ample car play. Oh, this is awesome. My, I put one of those in my wife's car. New and seat she covers. Have an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even know it had car play. This thing's pretty good. And I actually came up here with the dogs, and uh, there's some stuff. Here's all the Max right now. Um, the dogs are over in the hotel right now. But, uh, you know, it, it, it works very well. It, it's exactly what I needed to haul dogs with, for sure. Shape inside. How's the seats? They're very soft. Very, very nice how's the, seats. I mean, how's the leather on them? Uh, other than the bolster right here, which is about to tear, it's it's perfect. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Usually, there's usually a hole about this big in here from people's fat butts. Yeah. Because they slide in and out. Yeah, it, it, it's right on the edge of tearing, but it hasn't torn yet. That's one of the reasons why I got the cover to try to help it along. Um, but yeah, what do you think, Mike? It's not, I mean, for a Ford, it's not a bad try. I mean, I don't know what you paid for it. I, I know you told me, but I forgot. Yeah. I mean... These things are, people still, they're, they're still in pretty high demand. I mean, they haven't been made for, what, 10 years now? Yeah. Uh, people always want the diesel ones because the gas ones are junk. Those those V10 Tritons are horrible. But uh, People swear by those in the excursion groups, though. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, gas mileage and the fact they shoot spark plugs all the time. Well, that's, a, that's you know, there's one simple way you could solve that. Ford put, from the factory on the Tritons, Ford put uh, plugs in. That only had half a length of threads on it. Yeah. So you only have part of the actual, like if you have this much spark plug that could have threads, there's only this much thread. Yeah. The best solution is to take those OEM style spark plugs out and put regular auto lights in, which they don't even offer them with the partial threads. Right. And that, I'm not saying it fixes the problem, but it sure makes it a lot easier. Right. So, and actually, those old Triton motors are pretty reliable. They are just a nightmare to work on. They're an absolute pain in the butt to work on in these things. Well, spoiler alert, I own a V10 Triton. I bought a parts excursion, which is almost identical to this thing. It's oh, just, yeah? it's completely rotten out underneath. See, now that of it, that's actually kind of, I, I expect that on one of these. Yeah. Just any, any Ford, and it's not just Ford, any, any Chevy of this era too. I mean, my rocker panels are gone. Yeah. You know, which that's actually legal here. Because the rocker panels aren't structural. They're just yeah, cosmetic. Yeah. Um, but in the bottom of my doors are starting to rot out. You know, luckily I know a guy that inspects cars, so I get away with it. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, I'd say if you paid less than 10 grand for it, you got a pretty good deal. I you did over, but yeah. <laughs> but say, if you paid over 10 grand, you're between 10 and 15, I think, is about what these are going about for. About 15. Yeah. Yeah. That's not really bad. Yeah. I mean, it's loaded. 
and this thing just survived a six hour trip with no problems whatsoever. Dude, I drive a 2000 Saturn L200, <laughs> which is regarded as one of the absolute worst GMs ever made, and it just turned over 200,000 miles. So. Yeah. And I drive it at 85 miles an hour every day. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, there's the excursion update video. Let's. Uh, I, like this wheel. I like this tire. I'm going to have to take this off my, for my truck. Yeah, I. Uh, those are the uh, the continuation of the tires that were on this. Mm. Uh, basically, it's the same thread, but it, uh, I mean tread, but it's a totally different sidewall. Yeah, and they, they're deeper too. Yeah. Yeah, th these are. Uh these are good for climbing rocks because of how deep the treads are. Well, they uh, they discontinued the tires that were on it. Yeah, and those I, are the ones I had. I wanted a whole matching set, including the, the spare. So I ended up buying and buy, selling my old tires. Yeah. And uh, I, I found out that a few years ago they uh, stopped making that particular model. But these are literally the same tire. You may want to watch. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, yeah, well, it's rubbing right there. Yeah. That's not good. It was stuck to something. Oh, wait, no, it's there. What is that? You got any clips or zip ties? I've got zip ties. Oh, that's okay. Never mind. That's just the... Somebody must have painted undercoating on it, and that's actually... I thought it was rubbing through. It's not. It, it, then it's fine? Yeah. Good. But it is... It looks like it will hit the tire. It, it can hit the tire. So you just might want to keep an eye on that. Yeah. I know when you lift these things, I know that's... This is the kind of stuff you have issues with sometimes right just something to be aware of as long as you as long as you know about it gotcha gotcha 10 ply tires yeah. i like your 73 badges on there thank you i've never seen that put those on yeah nice. yeah all, all the badges other than the excursion badge i added well the banks ones i knew <laughs> yeah, I and I, I know about the power strip yeah although i've never seen one that actually had the international yeah yeah, that, that's uh, some Chinese market. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's actually kind of cool. And it looks just like the factory 6-7 one. Yeah. Yeah, people don't understand these aren't... The, the, the engines in these aren't made by Ford. They're made by International. Hence the International Diesel. So... Navi Star. Yep. The, uh... I, I said it wrong in the video. It was the T444E. Look at the back model. Yeah, 444 cubic inches. The, the 7.3 diesel, they started making it in uh, 1989? Uh, well, 88? The, the IDI, they started well, working Well, yeah, the I, but the IDI is, is the same the, engine line. The T4, uh, the T, the T, uh, triple four E, uh, power stroke, this power is a direct stroke. Injection. This thing, uh, they started making for Ford trucks. Uh, in 94, 94 yeah. and made them until mid-03 and came out with that absolutely horrendous 6 liter the funny thing is if you if you uh, bulletproof you, you 6 can bulletproof liters them, but from yeah. the factory they were they were notoriously junk yeah. the 7.3 is one of the best diesel and I'm not a diesel guy but the 7.3 is one of the best diesel motors yeah, it's an incredible motor I had a 91 uh, F350 tow truck I had a 7.3 IDI in it yeah. and Aside from getting the damn thing to start in the morning, I get 20 miles to a gallon and that thing just driving it back and forth with no car on it. And there's something I never mentioned about this truck. Oh, by the way, guys, I did update the uh, headlights and grill, and we put a uh, grill guard on there. I so. Have LED huh? I got LED turn signals in my car. <laughs> I'm, I'm eventually going to update that. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I. Uh, I've lost track of, oh yeah, I never mentioned that the T444E engine that's in this truck is the same engine that was in the bright yellow, well, they were all mostly bright yellow, uh, <laughs> school bus, the uh, the uh, 3800 series international school the bus. The 3800s, the RE4200, yeah, they all had, they all had. Same engine. In fact, this engine block school bus yellow. Yeah. So... They actually, they even produced these in tractor trailers, international tractor trailers. It was the smallest engine you could get. Yeah. A lot of them were, were inline sixes, somewhere yeah. in the 20, 20 liter range. But yeah, they, smaller trucks, local, local haul, local haulage and stuff like that. They use 7.3 turbos. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are you ready to head down to your house? Yeah, whenever you are. At least right. there's air conditioning in my car. And let's get going. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so now we're at Mike's place, and uh, Mike, we have a special machine in front of us. He's uh, covered this a few times on his channel, and this is a very special machine I'd like Mike to actually explain. And after this, we'll check out one of the uh, Macs we pulled out in the storage unit, and then we'll wrap up the video. But uh, right now, here's a very special iMac G5, and I want Mike to tell you a little bit about it. All right, it's an iMac G5. I randomly bought this for $50 off of, I think, Facebook Marketplace. I always wanted, I, I like the way these iMacs look. You know, they look, uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. They kind of look industrial, but they're not aluminum. They're just plastic. And this right. one here was really clean. So I paid the guy 50 bucks. I had no idea what it was. He had no idea. He didn't know if it was... I knew it was either a G5 or an early Intel. I was actually hoping for an early Intel, but it turned out to be a G5. So it's a 17-inch... or I'm sorry, 20-inch EyeSight 2.1 gigahertz iMac G5, which is the last iMac G5 they made. So, got it home, and I'm asking my buddies, Jay, Greg, and uh, Steve, it's like, hey, what's this extra port on the back? It's like, I've never seen anything like this. I've seen pictures of these things. I've never seen anything. There's a SD card and compact flash reader in this machine. And it took us a while to realize that... Uh, this was not a normal iMac. This is actually a prototype. And I never even thought about it. The guy even told me it belonged to Apple at one point in time. And it even has Apple development team on it, but it didn't really, I don't know, just didn't really dawn on me that maybe this wasn't a normal production machine. So uh, I've, I've done several videos tearing this machine down. I've torn it down a couple of times now. Uh, I've done some upgrades to it and uh, done some maintenance to it so if you're ever interested in any of that feel free to check out my channel there's i think five videos total but it's it's in all reality it's it's a regular 20 inch imac there's nothing otherwise than that special about it it's literally identical in every way shape and, yeah, and form it, it's it's identical except for that card reader and the uh firmware revision yes yeah, so it has a, a, beta, a beta i guess you, i guess it would be a beta rom in it yep and um, the, uh, the the the, pro the prototype and the and the production boards are all <laughs> the same. Um, they even the production boards even have the spot for the yes, compact flash they reader. They just don't have the actual reader. So. They, they literally cut it out in the very last second before they released it. Um, nobody knows why. Nobody even knows anything about well, it. Yeah, it's probably because you've seen how it works. It's 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 a little flaky. Very. It, it does work. It, it doesn't work with high capacity cards. It uh, it only works with standard SD cards. If you try to put a an SDHC card in it, it will not work at all. Um, I haven't tried it. The compact flash card. But uh, this is just an adapter. But it kind of goes in here, bonky, and it's it's got to be in there just perfect to work. But it does work. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, if if you like even bump it, it'll it'll unmount and start complaining. Oh, the door got stuck. And yeah, the doors get stuck on it. And it, it's it's a finicky little device. Um, I've never real. I've only tried it out just to see if it worked. But other, I mean, the machine itself works perfectly. Yeah. I actually love playing games on it. Huh. It's one of my. It's actually. Uh, it's my favorite. It's my favorite computer, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's powerful. It's compact. It's got a hell of a sound system on it, and the CD-ROM or, or the DVD drive will actually shoot disc across the room at you. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. Yeah. Um, but I keep it. In, I keep it put away to keep it out of harm's way because. You know, there, there's no defects on the case. Well, uh, you keep it put away because it's a prototype. That, and I have <laughs> cats, and they'd like to knock things over. Yeah, yeah, so. they do. <laughs> but, uh, so that's my uh, G5 iMac. And like I said, if you're interested in any videos on it, I have uh, five of them, I believe. One was the very first one where I think it was a two-hour live stream where I actually tore the machine down. Um, to see what 
was going on inside because nobody knew. And then I have a few videos of myself dismantling it, doing maintenance, putting, I have an SSD in it now. Um, have maxed the memory out, so it has two and a half gigs of memory, which is actually a good amount for a G5. And th by the way, this is a challenge for the rest of the Mackiac crew. There's two members in the Mackiac crew that have prototypes, and we're both in the same room right now. The rest of every, every, all the rest of the Mackiac crew needs to get a prototype. Come on, guys. <laughs> so. so. Maybe sometime soon we'll play Unreal Tournament 2004 and this is the machine I use. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. All right, well, you want to go to the, uh, the other iMac? Yep. All right, we'll be right back, guys. All right, to wrap up the video, I want to show you guys real quick. We just took it out of the box uh, and have it here. Everything else is still in the box. But this is my complete in-box blue and uh, blueberry um, Revision D iMac G3. I think it's a 333. Uh, I think so. Yeah, and this is a Revision D. This was the last trayload model. Um, at least I think it's a Re Revision D. Uh, and uh, it is in pristine, like new condition. It is like new. It is very beautiful. And we're going to turn it on real quick. This table really, really makes me nervous now, Mike. You think it's bad with that? You should try having a desk lamp on it. <laughs> so we'll turn this light off and we hit the power button. Oh yeah, the speakers aren't blown either. I know. Then again, I don't think it was really a problem on tray loads. Oh, that could be. That's true, because they didn't have the Harman Kardon speakers. They had different, they had like smaller... Well, actually, I think Harman Kardon still made them, but oh, really? it was a little different. Refresh rate sucks on this thing. Oh, well. Yeah, it has yeah it's got OS 9. Hey, it's synced. Neat. Did it really? Yeah. Oh, cool. I thought it had OS 9 on it. I think it was 9.1. Your computer did not shut down properly. <laughs> And the sync went off. It's because it changed resolutions. Yeah. I can change it to something else. Hi, baby. Are you still recording? Yeah. Yeah, we'll speed this part up. <laughs> yeah, it's not the fastest thing in the world, I'll assure you of that. But Actually, I think if you put OS 8.6 back on it, I think it would probably speed up about three times. And that was the old guy that owned it, I think. I figured he would have probably put a picture of himself on it. What is Rig Redneck Rampage? Oh yeah, I tried playing Redneck Rampage on it. It's like, it's like Doom. <laughs> but with cursing and beer. <laughs> cool, I kind of want to try that now. It is fun. It's got 96 oh, mags of RAM in it. We'll have to max that out eventually. What is the maximum? 188? Uh, 512. Oh, is it 512? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the revision A was 384. Mm. The revision B was 512. And all the way through D was 512. It's not exactly a speed demon. No. Oh, yeah, it's got a 32 and a 64 meg dim in it. Yep, and it is, it is indeed a 333. 333. Neat. Cool. 96 megs of RAM for one is really isn't horrible. No, but it could be better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's got the original 6 gig hard drive in it, and amazingly it's working yeah. as well as it is. And there's barely anything on it because it's still got at least three quarters of the drive available. Yeah. Which is <laughs> almost unheard of on a six gig hard drive. Yeah. They filled up pretty quick even when they were new. So, but yeah, it's running OS 9.0.4, which uh, that sh should be replaced with either 9.1 or 8.6. I would do 8.6, truthfully. Yeah. If it was up to me. Um, the, G, the early G3s did not like OS 9 very much. I mean, it, it works, it's just sluggish. 
Right. Why not? Is this still has a sink? No, it's it's in this it's in the sink. Oh, the sink. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's got a seventy. Oh, seventy-five hertz. Okay. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if you really use it on the internet. There's not really a lot of internet stuff on there. Some card games and. It honestly, it looks like the last time it was really used was 2004, and for some yeah. random reason, 2006. Uh, that no. Yeah, that's weird. Netflix security error. Okay. What? Oh. Yeah. From 2006. That's weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> But yeah, the backstory was after um, we bought it, the, the seller said that she really wanted his files off of it. So Mike backed it up for her, and what did you do, send her a drive? Or? Uh, I think I did. Yeah, so we backed it up. I'm going to be wiping it very soon and setting it up in a future video. And yeah, it's it's a very nice machine, and I'm very happy Mike picked it up for me. It's probably one of the nicest looking iMacs I've ever come across. And most definitely. I mean, I have I have a Ruby and a Snow. Both of those are even later than this machine, and neither one of them look as nice as this. Yeah. I mean, this thing—the you know, plastic's beautiful. Everything's still clipped together. Yeah. I don't think I, I truthfully don't think it ever saw a lot of heavy use. I do know he, the guy did use it though because the uh, puck mouse is absolutely filthy inside. Yeah, I bought a new puck mouse for it. I just need to take it apart and cleaned out inside. Give it to Jay; he'll do it. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, but. It, <laughs> It looked, I, I bought a brand new one. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so. But the keyboard's clean and everything, and so, you know, yeah. I would have bought it, truthfully. Just to have one, I don't know what use I would have gotten out of it, but, yeah. you know. I didn't try the CD wrong. I'm assuming it works. Those are pretty reliable. Yeah, it's. Well, it's come opens. to think of it, the one on my uh, Bondi Blue is uh, it broken. Really? Yeah, it died I know on it. usually with these, it usually seems to be the fronts busted yeah. and the eject buttons don't and work It's usually anymore. out of alignment because they're mounted with a weird spring system. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with these. I, I, most of my experience is with the tray loads. Yeah. And it, the drives would never work on those because the belts are all worn out. Same thing with the cube I have. The belt on the drive works, but the belts are all worn out. It's a pain in the butt to get a DVD out of it. Yeah. So, but there you go. You got a nice, nice OS9 machine. Yeah, I'm very happy with it for sure. So anyway, guys, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, don't forget to su su subscribe to Mike's Mac Shack. Right, Mike? Yeah. Promote yourself here. Come on. Go to Mike's Mac Shack. Eat at Joe's. <laughs> Come on, I need 300 subscribers so I can get rid of this damn iBook G4. Yes, exactly. I'm only like 20 away at this point. He I is believe. giving away an iMac G4, which came no, from... iBook. iBook. Oh, yeah, iBook, yeah. Which came from Steve from Mac84. And he's trying to dig it out here. Ta-da! Which uh, megahertz is on, on 1. that 1.07. 1.07. Yep. I just got a parts one of those, just like that. One and a quarter gig of RAM, a 30 gig hard drive, and it's been sitting for like two months of the battery's flat. But um, yeah, it's, things in really nice shape. This thing was absolutely, when I bought, when I got this from Steve, it, it had marker on it, goo, and oh my God, it was horrible looking, but it was a good running machine. So yeah. I cleaned it up really good and polished it up as good as I could. And I cleaned it, got in here and cleaned the keyboard. You spawned the school district, I think. Yeah. Um, put some memory. It only had 512 megs in it, and uh, so I upgraded the RAM in it. And you know, I don't really have much use for it, so I figure, you know, give it away. Somebody will, somebody will get some good use. These are good for running classic stuff and running out. This thing runs OS 10 4 great. So yeah. So guys, if you want to try to win an iBook G4, go subscribe to Mike, and he'll be giving it away hopefully pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have some stuff here I'm working on. I'm going to get cracking here as soon as the heat wave breaks in Pennsylvania. That's going to be a while. <laughs> about a two weeks. Yeah. Really? Two yeah, weeks? I've got my mid-August. It usually starts going down in the high 80s. Huh. So. Yeah. 
so. Yeah. But that's it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Checking all this stuff out at Mike's, picking up stuff, checking out the excursion. And, um, you know, don't forget, I do have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. There'll be a link at the end of the video and also in the description below. And, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching, and this has been a Lucky Mods video. Bonus material, guys. As I was walking out, Mike decided to give me his Creative Zen Micro. This thing's pretty neat. Might do a uh, video on it one day. Uh, it, the battery's dead in it currently, but he says it works. So I'll charge it up and see if we can get it to go. It could be a very fun video sometime. Uh, kind of looks like a Nokia battery. Interesting. Anyway. So I thought you guys might like to see that, and uh, yeah, uh, see you guys later. Hello, I'm Greg Rodkin at Rodkin Mods, and welcome to another at location video. No, it's no, no, it's it's no. on location. On location. Another video on location. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Huh? Something like that. That sounds better. All right, am I in frame? Hot and centered. Do I look good? You're in the center. What? That doesn't tell me if I look good. <laughs> My mom said if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yes, you look fine. Thank you. All right. Well, let's wrap it up.